my dear students today in this video we are going to study a very important very inspiring very encouraging and very motivating poem from the textbook of 12th standard that is poem number one and the title of the poem is song of the open road and this poem is written by walt whitman but before going to deal with or before going to start this poem we have to understand we have to study some of the topics that are related to this poem and understanding these topics is very essential for the better understanding of this poem and first of all let's try to get a very short information about the writer about the poet of this poem and the poet of this poem is walt whitman friends walt whitman is an american poet essayist and journalist he was born in 1819 and he passed away in 1892 Though he did not invent the free verse, he is often known as, he is often called as the father of free verse because of his extensive use, because of his large use in his poetry. He has written so many notable works, but one of the notable works is Leaves of Grass. And this is the collection of near about 400 poems and the famous poems from this collection are from this collection of poems are song of the open road that is there for our study this year then o captain my captain and when lilacs last in the dooryard bloomed last two poems are very famous regarding the death of abram lincoln these poems are about the death of abram lincoln as I told you, this poem is taken from the collection of the poems uh, that is Leaves of Grass. Originally, this poem that is Song of the Open Road is a very lengthy poem and it has uh, 224 lines. And there are 15 sections in this poem, but here for our study, only the first section has been introduced. So, in the first section that is in our poem, there are only four stanzas and the first stanza is composed of just three lines and the remaining three stanzas are composed of four lines each. Then it is a pre-verse type poem. I told you I have already discussed what is mean by a free verse in earlier video. But here once again, I would like to tell you that free verse is a kind of poem in which there is no regular rhyme or meter rhyme means the repetition of sound and meter is the occurrence of stressed or unstressed the syllabic patterns in the line of the poem or it is the pattern of beats or it is the it is a unit of rhyme in the line of a poem that is called as meter so there is no regular meter or rhyme in free verse type poem then there are no limitations of using and adjusting words for the sake of rigid monotonous rhyme on poet and then the poet can express his powerful feelings his inner feelings as william wordsworth one of the greatest poets has said spontaneously without any tension he can express his feelings freely in free verse then there are breaks in lines and uh, the use of short and long lines then the use of symbolism metaphors or other figures of speech like alliteration is also a special feature of then what makes this piece of writing different from the prose or what makes this piece of writing a poem the use of breaks in lines use of long and short lines use of symbolism use of allusions use of metaphors or use of sound patterns and use of different figures of speech or figurative language makes this piece of writing or gives this piece of writing the sense of poetry so though on the first reading it looks as if it is a prose actually it is different from a prose then what is the benefit the poet can express his feelings freely and in this poem the poet has purposefully used free verse to express his uh, free light-hearted and joyful feelings in this poem the pronoun i has been used uh, 
and it is very clear it is very obvious that the speaker of this poem is Walt Whitman the poet himself and that's why he has used the pronoun I but if uh, there is a question on the use of pronoun I then we have to consider the following points first of all the poem is written in the first person point of view I the pronoun I can be the poet himself or the pronoun I can be an uh, any American person or I can be the reader or every person in the world to whom the poem is addressed and the poet is appealing to live such a life that is expressed in this poem then the use of the pronoun I helps to understand the speakers or the poets personal thoughts and actions and intentions very easily then the pronoun I the use of pronoun I gives the feelings of intimacy that is closeness and connection between the reader and poet are created the strong connection we feel as if there is a strong intimacy between the poet and the reader we can easily understand we feel a kind of closeness to what the poet is trying to tell to its reader then a poet conveys his message very effectively when he uses the pronouns I because he conveys his message he conveys his ideas through the bottom of his heart the title of the poem is song of the open road and we know that the image the symbol of road is very dominant very prevalent throughout the poem we know that the poet has used the image of road symbolically and metaphorically I told you in the earlier video that one of the features of poetry is the use of symbolism the poet does not convey his idea directly he uses symbols to convey his ideas here in this poem the poet has used the symbol of road then what does it stand for in this poem what does the image of road in this poem mean very simple road is the road of our life road is the road of our life means it is compared to the journey of our life road is the journey of our life or road is our life itself road is the symbol of mobility also we know that and the poet also tells us that our life should not be stagnant it should be active it should be mobile in the poem and we know and every person knows that our life is like a road it is mobile it is not stagnant it is not still it is active then open road is the symbol of fraternity and freedom also we have in our life we have the freedom to choose our destiny we have the freedom to choose our career we have the freedom to choose our aim in the same way road is a place a democratic place where different people from all walks of life come together it means that it is not or it does not happen that the road allows only for the people of special category to come and to walk on it the road on the road we see different people come together they have activity they interchange their ideas they have communication or different kinds of activities take place on the road and it is the symbol of a democratic place where different people from all walks of life come together in america during the 1950s open road was a symbol of progress it was a symbol of a route to spaces where one was free to prosper and to come in with nature and to discover one's selfhood and to undergo spiritual regeneration now let's turn to the poem and the title of the poem is song of the open road and this poem is written by walt whitman a foot and light-hearted i take to the open road healthy free the world before me the long brown path before me leading wherever i choose a foot means traveling by foot 
or a food means in preparation or progress or happening or beginning to happen in the very first line of the poem the poet tells the readers that he has set off on a journey he has embarked on a journey or he has begun a journey and he has begun his journey to the open road open road as i told you earlier the road of his life the journey of his life or his life itself the poet in simple words in the very first line tells the readers that he has set off on a journey of his life and he tells us that as he has set off on a journey of his life he is feeling very happy he is feeling very light hearted why because there are no tensions there are no limitations there are no bothersations why because the world before him is a healthy world a free world a favorable world a democratic world the poet wants to suggest us that he can achieve the things he can achieve his dreams in this world in this democratic world because the democratic world that is lying before him is a healthy world a free world there is nothing that can stop there is no obstacle that can stop the poet from achieving the things that he has decided to achieve in the journey of his life the long brown path before me leading wherever i choose the brown path the path the road the journey of his life is very long and it is brown means it indicates a lot of possibilities are there in his life and he will decide what to do he will decide what to achieve or the poet will decide what to get or what to keep and what to keep aside what to keep with him and what to keep aside it means that the road the journey of the life will be molded by the poet himself the road the journey will be chosen by the poet himself the road of his life the journey of his life henceforth i ask not good fortune i myself am good fortune the poet says that henceforth means from this point the poet says that from this point i will not ask or i will not expect anything good to happen in my life from god i will not expect anything good or better that should take place without any efforts from the almighty he believes that our expectations never end our expectations never end and that's why he will not ask or he will not expect anything good to happen without any efforts from the almighty in his life i myself am good fortune the poet says that it shows the confidence of the poet this line shows the confidence that he has in himself i myself am good fortune means the poet says that perhaps he believes that god the almighty has given two hands legs eyes brain and what else could he expect from the almighty he can create his good fortune and that's why he says i myself am good fortune henceforth i whimper no more whimper means to complain to groan or to make a series of low feeble sounds expressive of fear pain or unhappiness not complain i will not whimper, whimper or i will not groan i will not cry any more from this point we see people crying people blaming their fate people blaming their destiny people blaming the god the almighty but the poet says that very confidently the poet says that i am the fortune myself i will create my own fortune and from this moment from this point i will not whimper i will not cry perhaps this indicates the struggle of the life of the poet himself postpone no more means i will not postpone my work i will not postpone my journey postpone 
people postpone things in the expectation of something better will happen but they lose their time in postponing things here the poet wants to tell the readers that i will not postpone my journey i will not postpone the things that i want to achieve in my life need nothing i will not need anything i don't need anything i will not expect anything i need i don't need the help of any person done with indoor complaints libraries curious criticisms strong and content i travel the open road in his life the father of poet also had to struggle a lot and the poet also had to struggle a lot the line done with indoor complaints libraries curious criticism perhaps refers to the work he did as a printer as a journalist and as a teacher or as a writer also libraries perhaps refer to the time that he spent in the library of new york he had to write so many editions of his uh, collection of poetry that is leaves of the grass and for that he had to spend a lot of time there in the libraries in new york and the earlier versions of his collection of poetry did not receive the well appreciation it was not received well by the critics and it had to suffer a lot of criticism perhaps the poet is referring Uh, to these things in this line but now the poet tells the readers that now it is done he has done all with all those things means there will be no complaints there are no complaints there are no criticisms and there are no libraries in his life strong and content i travel the open road means now he is content he is satisfied he has full freedom to do whatever he wants to do in his life because the world before him is a favorable world a democratic world a healthy world and that's why he is having the feeling of contentedness or he is having the feeling of satisfaction in his life now the earth that is sufficient i do not want the constellations any nearer the earth here means the earth itself the earth itself is sufficient means there is each and everything on this earth that you want to achieve the earth can be the symbol for the people living in this world living in this world or living in the company of common people also i can achieve the thing that i want to achieve the poet believes the poet very confidently says that i can achieve each and everything that i have decided to achieve i have decided to get in this world living in the company of common people also and he says that the earth that is sufficient means there is each and everything on this earth that you know, each and everything in this world that you want to get in your life and that's why there is no need to expect the constellations in your life constellations means fate or destiny or constellations means the group of influential people the poet very confidently says that if the earth earth is able to provide each and everything that you want then why should i i why should i expect constellations why should i expect the favor of fate the favor of destiny the favor of the almighty why why should i expect the favor of the influential people in my life i know they are very well where they are i know they suffice for those who belong to them here the poet seems to be satisfied it is said that satisfaction lies within and the poet is satisfied because he says that he does not want any kind of constellations constellations here also can be the wealth the richness the poet says that he does not want the favor of fate destiny almighty or the favor of the influential group of people 
or he does not want any kind of wealth because he says that very satisfactorily he says that let these things be in their own place where they are let these things belong to the people who already have these things with them why should i compete with these people why should i expect these things why should i uh, compete and uh, try to get like those people he says that these things are enough suffice means enough these things are enough for those who belong to them still like my old delicious burdens i carry them men and women i carry them with me wherever i go i swear it is impossible for me to get rid of them i am filled with them and i will fill them in return this is the last stanza that is the fourth stanza of the poem and this stanza is called as parenthesis parenthesis is an aside or is an afterthought and it has been put into bracket it is an afterthought and it has been put into bracket so poet has used this technique of parenthesis in this poem here in this stanza in the first line the poet says that still i carry my old delicious burdens delicious burdens this is the phrase very interesting phrase that the poet uses can burdens be delicious no the burdens cannot be delicious these are the contradictory ideas and here the paradox figure of speech is used the ideas seem to be contradictory but the truth is there for example wordsworth says child is the father of man can a child be a father of man no these ideas seem to be contradictory but there lies a deep truth in this in the same way here also paradox figure of speech is used delicious burdens burdens cannot be delicious these are contradictory ideas but there is a deep truth lying under this now here burdens can be at least three things number one burdens can be the real burdens the risks the responsibilities the difficulties the troubles the struggles that the poet faced in the journey of his life number two burdens can be the people that he met in the journey of his life and number three burdens can be the sweet memories that he got in the journey of his life and the poet further says i carry them men and women i carry them with me wherever i go i carry all these things with me wherever i go i carry all these things i carry the burdens whether it may be burdens people or sweet memories i carry them with me wherever i go i swear the poet says that i swear means i declare i say that it is impossible for me to get rid of them get rid of them means to get free of them i cannot separate myself i cannot free myself from these things means i cannot separate from the sweet memories that i got in the life journey or i cannot separate from the people that i that i that met me or that i met in the journey of my life or i cannot free myself from the real burdens the struggles that i faced the difficulties that i faced i carry them i carry them wherever i go i carry them with me wherever i go i am filled with them and i will fill them in return i am occupied these things have filled my life my life has been occupied by these things these things means as i told you these these things may be the people that i met in the journey of my life or the sweet memories or the burdens the real difficulties that i faced in the journey of my life these things have occupied my life these things have filled my lives and in turn i will fill them also means i cannot separate 
I take these burdens, I take these things as the part and parcel of my life. The poet Parhyas may be trying to tell us that the burdens, the tensions, the difficulties, the struggles, these things are part and parcel of our life. But we should not get affected by these things. Our life should not get affected by these things. We should accept them very lightheartedly. We should accept them as a challenge and we should carry them wherever we go in the journey. Of Here are some of the themes that we see in this poem. First of all, the poem is a fine blending of the themes like self-awareness, free will and tender heart. Another major important theme of the poem is hope and renewed vigor. My friends, our life is not free of risks. Our life is not free of tensions, burdens, struggles or worst situations. But we have to fight all these things, all these situations courageously. We should have confidence uh, and we should have uh, belief in our abilities. The poet has the belief. The poet is so confident and he accepts he does not run away from the problems of life. He calls them delicious uh, burdens and he accepts them. And he says in the last line that I carry these problems, I carry these uh, burdens wherever I go. I have made them the part and parcel of my life. These problems have occupied my life. But the poet never says that we should run away, we should take tension or we should bother, we should have some botheration uh, when such situations are there in our life. The poet never says like poet never says like this, and he accepts all these things very lightheartedly. He begins, he uh, sets off on a journey very happily, and he accepts these problems very lightheartedly because he has the belief he does not want the favor of any influential group of people. He does not want the favor of uh, uh, fate or destiny or the Almighty. He believes in himself. He says at one uh, place in the poem that I am my own fortune. It shows the confidence that the poet has in himself. And when you are having such kind of confidence, then only there will be the hope for, of the better future. Uh, then there is a satisfaction because the poet says that I do not want the constellations means I do not want the favor of any uh, influential group of people or uh, fate or destiny. The, it means that the poet is satisfied. Then self-confidence he says in uh, uh, one of the lines that I am my own fortune means uh, he has the belief in his abilities. Then another theme of the poem is enjoyment of life. He takes everything, he accept, accepts every burden of life, every struggle or every tension of life uh, lightheartedly and enjoys the life. Then being courageous and bold, that is one of the important theme of the poem. It means that the poet gives a valuable message uh, that we should be courageous and bold and then and then only we will be able to face we will be able to come out of the worst situations in the journey of our life. I, so friends, I hope that you have understood the poem very well. And in the next video, we will be there with another poem. And till then, bye.